Romanticizing your life is all about living more intentionally and yoga is the perfect way to do this. It's all about being in the moment, connecting to your body and your breath and focusing on the here and now. I like to start my day with exercise if I can and when I do yoga rather than the gym it always feels like a treat. To romanticize your yoga session you could always light candles or if the weather's not too bad you could take your mat outside or even to the beach if you live near the sea. Hi lovelies, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I wanted to talk today about 10 ways to romanticize your life, be the main character of your life, just generally make life just more fun and enjoyable. One thing that I really like to do is to write down my ideal day. Now you can do this just as your life is but what you would ideally want to do on a day off or how you would want an ideal working day to go um, but I have made it a little bit more interesting by adding characters to my ideal day. So I have an Italian day inspired by the way that stereotypically Italians live their lives, so things like a two hour lunch and things like that. And I also have an ideal day that's kind of more based around like cottage core aesthetic and like an English lady, someone from a Jane Austen novel, how she might live her day. I got this idea originally from some of the self-improvement books that I read and a lot of them are in this kind of European chic genre. So one of my favourite authors to read is Fiona Ferris. I've read I think all of her ebooks and she writes about living your ideal French inspired life. So she does a lot of Parisian inspired stuff and in her, I think it was her first book, she talked about writing down her ideal day as if she was living in Paris even though she lives in New Zealand. And then she talks about how she can take elements of that lifestyle and apply it to her life in New Zealand in a less idealised, more accessible way. And that is another thing that I would recommend doing if you do want to romanticise your life is to read these self-improvement books. They don't have to necessarily be these like European chic, quite um, frivolous <laughs> books that I really enjoy, but it could be things like Atomic Habits by James Clear. That is a really, really good book. The 5am Morning Routine is one that I really want to read. I just love any books that are just kind of about improving your life. I guess they used to be called self-help books. We now call them self-improvement because it doesn't have that like connotation of being a little bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> but they're the same thing and I have found these so so helpful in just generally improving my life. I was inspired by my friend Katie's video about taking yourself on a solo date. So I took myself to Nottingham City Centre and I decided to act like a tourist in my own town. So I took the time to notice the beautiful architecture. We have some really lovely buildings in Nottingham that I walk past all the time and just don't bother to notice. Even places like Bill's Restaurant, it's just a chain, but it's such a pretty building. The Alchemist, which is a cocktail bar that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't go there for cocktails. There are much better places. Oh my god, donuts. This is not a particularly beautiful building, but they do beautiful donuts. So I decided to treat myself to lunch at French Living, which is an authentic French restaurant in Nottingham. I know it's authentic because the staff all speak French to each other, so it is French owned. And it was just delicious. I had smoked salmon and asparagus salad with hollandaise sauce, which was perfection and I didn't take a book, I should have taken a book to read between courses but I just, people watched the whole time, just looked out the window and watched what people were doing and then I had the most amazing creme brulee for dessert and I was a bit stuck between the creme brulee and a different dessert and I asked the waitress what she recommended and she said lots of people tell me this is the best creme brulee they've ever tasted and I have to agree. It was amazing. It was big though, but it was so, so tasty. I forgot to do the little smack with the spoon before. I kind of forgot how to eat creme brulee because it's been that long <laughs> since I had some. Um, so I'm sorry that I didn't get the uh, money shot. After my little lunch, I decided to go shopping. I went to TK Maxx. I saw this lovely um, little set of hair bands that I was very tempted by. I didn't get them in the end. I actually didn't end up finding very much in TK Maxx apart from a big bag of pasta <laughs> that I brought home with me. So I headed to Waterstones, which is probably my favourite shop in Nottingham. I just love bookshops and they are such a good way of romanticising your life because you just feel like you're in Belle from Beauty and the Beast's library. I just love going around a bookshop. I can spend hours in there and I particularly like Waterstones. I know that they're not independent, I know they are a chain, but I just think they're so good at arranging the books and they always have like little recommendations, little note cards with little reviews from the staff. I just think they're really good at their marketing. I do like secondhand bookshops but I always find that it's a bit higgledy-piggledy and I get a bit overwhelmed by the sheer 
number of books. But again, I didn't actually bring any books home with me this time. Um, I just wasn't really struck by anything, but I did see some really, really beautiful copies of books. I didn't get a chance to show you my outfit before I left for town because I had to rush it for a bus. So this is what I am wearing. Um, I am wearing my Primark loafers, well, backless loafers, which I've had for a while, but I'm really loving them now that I've bought these trousers because I feel like they just go so well. The trousers are from Mango. They were in a recent haul. The cream knit is from Lily Silk. I've had this for quite a while. It needs replacing, really. And the coat is... Um, I don't just replace things because they're necessarily old it's because it has like a hole in the back <laughs> like it's under my hair so it's not an issue but I just like one that doesn't have a hole in really um, and then the coat is my Ted Baker camel one which is um, one of my favorites the one that I probably reach for the most um, I decided to forego a scarf because I was trying to manifest good weather and it worked um, it rained really really heavily before I left and I was like well I don't know if I want to go and then it stopped, so I was like, right, when's the next bus? So I went, and then it didn't rain the whole time, and it's kind of looking like it might be thinking about raining again now, but that's fine, because I'm indoors, so I'm happy with that. This next tip is something that I am not so good at doing myself, because I tend to leave it too long, and then I just need the thing and have to buy the rubbish version. But the tip is to not buy things just because you need them, and get whatever's the cheapest version or the first version that you see. Always try and go for the prettiest version of the thing you need, even if it's something like a screwdriver. As a little add-on to that, I think it's really good as well if you can try and keep things in a colour palette. So for a long time, I was very into blush pink and rose gold tones. So I started to, everything that I bought, I would get it in those tones if it was available. And it has created a very nice girly aesthetic in my dressing room, which is where I film my videos. I have gone off that a little bit now but it's nice that I still have this little pink haven in here and I can get more into my like greens and creams and things in other areas of the house. Ah, guys I've just filmed a load of stuff for you and then realized that the bloody mic wasn't turned on. I mean what is the point? Let's make sure it's turned on now. Yes it is. <laughs> what is the point of a mic with an off switch? Like why would you have it attached if you don't want it on? Honestly. So yeah, so what I wanted to say is that I wanted to talk about romanticizing meals, um, but I don't have a lot of time to talk about it now because my meal is nearly done, so I need to keep an eye on it. But one thing that I wanted to mention was that I think trying new recipes is a really good way to get yourself excited about cooking. Jack's away, what normally happens is when he's away I get a takeaway and I eat it in front of the TV and um, it's not very romantic. <laughs> um, and that did happen last night, to be fair. But tonight I wanted to try this new recipe that my friend George gave me. I'm gonna give that a little bit longer. On this occasion, I decided to cook for myself and try out this new recipe, and um, I was kind of forced to do it because Jack doesn't like aubergines, it's an aubergine pasta. So if I wanna try out this new recipe, I have to try it out when he's not here. So I'm cooking a lovely meal for myself. I'm trying to get into the habit of having my meals be like a bit of a ritual. Like they already are a little bit. Jack and I always eat together at the table. We, unless we get a takeaway, we very rarely sit and eat our dinner in the living room or in front of the TV. And we often light candles. I always make sure that the placemats and things are out on the table. And we often have um, Billy Joel playing in the background or other like nice music but I never do that for myself and Jack says the same like when he goes away he just ends up having takeaways all the time or he'll have like oven pizzas and things and I really think it's important to try and make it a special thing even if you're just cooking for yourself because I mean some people live on their own so you can't be eating takeaways and things all the time and I'm sure that someone who lives on their own would have a lot more tips than I do about romanticizing cooking for yourself I, in fact I'm gonna have a look after I finish filming for YouTube videos about that very subject because whenever Jack goes away I do more often than not end up just eating really badly because I just see cooking for myself as a chore. Oh, uh, I've been talking to you loads while I've been cooking. I'm gonna have to do it all in voiceover because I just realized the bloody mic wasn't turned on. Uh, but this is actually um, starting to smell really delicious. And um, it says to, just before the pasta is finished to add garlic and basil into this um, but the pasta's actually been finished for a while I like my pasta quite soft and um, so I started it quite early and then I just put it on a low heat for like while I was doing the rest so I'm just going to give this a little bit longer just to thicken up a bit more 
because I don't want no runny pasta, or runny pasta sauce even. Um, and then I'm going to finish off the recipe. And my dinner is ready. I did way too much pasta because it was big pasta. Normally I measure it out to about 75 grams, but I measured it and I looked and I was like, that's barely any pasta. But of course it's barely any pasta because they're huge. <laughs> so I did like a hundred grams. So I've done like 30 grams more than I usually do. Um, but it smells delicious. And I've poured myself a glass of Rose Prosecco, which our friends Josh and Charlotte kindly bought us when they visited at the weekend because we are romanticizing our lives today. I don't normally drink on my own. <laughs> so let's see what this pasta dish is like. Oh, I really hope that I've done it how it's supposed to be done. There were some good tips in there like um, the aubergine, it said chop it like some small, some big, and then there's like a nice mix of textures in your dish. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very tasty. Oh, that's really nice. All oh, right, I've just got a bit of a kick from the chili as well. Oh, that's really good. This is the thing about the Italians, so like, their flavors and their recipe, well, I guess maybe not their recipes, but their flavors are so simple, but just work perfectly. Like, like the margarita pizza is just, my absolute favorite because it's just so simple, it works so well. The Italians are just absolute geniuses. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna say goodnight to you. No, I'm not gonna say goodnight to you. I'm gonna choose a film after this so I might come back and talk to you then. This next tip is really about enjoying the moment and being in the moment. I talked about this at the beginning of the video with my little yoga session. I do find that a lot of the time I'm not in the moment because there are so many distractions around. I'll have something on the telly that I do wanna watch and I know I will enjoy it if I sit there and focus on it, but I always end up scrolling on my phone or I might be nibbling on something. But I think it's a really good idea to go into cinema mode whenever you do put something on the telly to watch. So if I want to watch a lovely girly movie or a TV show that I'm really into at the moment, me and Jack have just started The White Lotus. I've seen it before and I've been trying to convince him to watch it with me as well. When I talk about going into cinema mode, I mean go and get yourself a drink, go to the toilet before the film starts or the TV show starts, put your phone away. You wouldn't be sitting there scrolling on your phone at the cinema. Imagine that you've paid for this like you would have paid to go to the cinema and then you are not going to want to sit on your phone or instead of watching the movie. The final three tips on romanticizing your life are more about romanticizing your working day which I think is something that I would definitely like to look into a bit more because I think it's really important to try and be positive about your working day because let's face it it can really get you down. I'm in a job that I do think is a really good job. I work for a decent company. They do look after their employees and I don't find the job too strenuous. Last week I did get a little bit overwhelmed and I have really just felt like I was quite drained from it, but that's quite rare in my job. But I have been in jobs before where that is the norm and I understand that there are many people out there that probably feel that way about their jobs now and just basically just hate their jobs. So I'm hoping that these tips might help a little bit. And um, bear in mind that I do work from home four days a week. And on the one day that I go into the office, I treat myself to a breakfast pastry. Obviously, if you're in the office five days a week, this is probably not a way that you want to romanticize your life every single day that you go into the office because that's quite unhealthy. But because I only go in once a week, I treat myself to it and I don't feel guilty about it. I usually just go to Tesco or somewhere, they're a little baked goods section because they're a lot cheaper than Starbucks or anywhere like that. But on occasion, I might treat myself to one in a cafe because they are a little bit warmer, a little bit fresher. The final two tips are about working from home. So if you don't work from home, I'm sorry, I will try and do like a little brainstorm of ways that you can romanticize your life if you do go into the office a lot. But my next tip is to light candles when you are working from home. I think this is something that people just don't really think to do because they're like, well, I'm at work. Like for a long time, I only lit candles if I was like sitting watching a movie or if I was getting in the bath, but you can light candles 
any time I listen to a cleaning podcast to like help motivate me to clean and they always say why don't you light a candle before you start cleaning because then it signifies that it's time to make your home like a calm oasis. So that's a really good thing to do for your working day as well. If your work can be a little bit stressful, light yourself a candle and just take a few deep breaths and then maybe that will help to just start your day off on a little bit more of a positive note. And finally, this is something that I learned during the first lockdown because I found myself on my days off and in fact on my work days as well, I was just like sitting in my pajamas and I felt really miserable. I was very anxious anyway, we were all very anxious at that time. And um, I found that just sitting around, not like getting ready, not getting myself looking presentable for the day, really affected my mental health. And so I started to make sure that I would just choose a nice outfit in the morning. And now that has progressed to um, basically just acting as if I am going into the office. So I do do my makeup a lot of the time now to work from home. Not as much as, you know, not all the time. But even if I don't do my makeup, I always make sure that my hair looks presentable. That is quite hard with my hair because it just always looks a bit rubbish. <laughs> and I make sure that my nails are presentable as well. My favorite thing to do is to wear stick-on nails that you can just get from Amazon really cheap or any like pharmacy or anything. But I like the Amazon ones because they are cheap. The, I mean, you do pay for what you get. They're not brilliant. <laughs> but to be honest, all fake nails will fly off at all times. So just make sure that you carry nail glue around with you if you're going to do this. Um, but this is the quickest and easiest way for me to make sure that my nails always look presentable because I just, I don't want to pay to go to a salon and have it done. It's, I mean, it's extortionate in the UK. And, um, <clears throat> If I wear nail polish, I don't really like applying it. I find it really dull and it also just chips so easily and I just get sick of having to reapply it all the time. And then I run out of the nail varnish really, really quickly as well because it has to be reapplied so often. So these are my preferred choice, but I know a lot of women in the UK do prefer to go to a salon and that's something that's like their treat for themselves for the month that they always make sure that they have really lovely nails from the salon. This is my alternative. Thank you so, so much for watching this video, my lovelies. Do let me know in the comments if you try any of these ways of romanticizing your life and also let me know if you have any tips for romanticizing your life, especially romanticizing your working day and especially romanticizing your life on a budget or even for free, because I do find that the ways I do it, they do tend to cost money. Thank you again, lovelies, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.